the fact that we are weaving wheelchair um, disabled, if you want, um, do need, need to have sex. It makes me wonder where the taboo about disabled people and sex comes from. And why more isn't done to meet all of their natural needs, not just the ones it's polite to talk about at the dinner table. Toby, how was that? Fantastic. Like, how good was it? Fantastic. What, was it like this? Or? Yeah, great. Surprised were the tales of my demise. I visited one of the best disabled friendly gyms called the Fighting Lions Taekwondo Health and Fitness Club in Essendon, Victoria, and I explored the facilities for disabled children who want to take part in Taekwondo and gymnastics. Now I've got a special guest now. I had a chat with him. His name's Steve Curry. He won a bronze medal in the Taekwondo Olympic, Paralympic. Hey, what did you win? Sorry? Oh, what did you win? A uh, bronze medal. A bronze medal. What competition was it? The first uh, para champions, world taekwondo para championships in Azerbaijan. The first, so you were the very first para taekwondo champion. I visited Steve's house to know more about his arm and how it affects his fighting. What is so it? what happened? I uh, a motorbike accident five years ago. Um, hit a street sign. Really? Up in the shoulder. So basically tears all the nerves out of the um, spinal cord yeah. um, and yeah I left with I was left with a couple of nerve endings attached but they're all severely damaged and so forth you can't move your hand nah no nah. oh really so, yeah hands completely gone I've basically got just bicep a little bit of shoulder and that's about it nothing in the forearm has it made you more confident being in this environment, yeah. Yeah, certainly. I, um, what about outside? Yeah, yeah, look, certainly people, my friends who have uh, seen my achievements, they're, they're astounded by it, you know. I'm astounded by it, thank you. Yeah. This is Georgia and her brother Danny. Georgia suffers from Down syndrome and also has leukemia. To add to the difficulty of living with a disability, Danny also looks after his mother who has bowel cancer. Yeah, it's pretty intense. So, yeah, but um, oh, we've got we've got uh, I've got two older siblings, so we both your older brother. We all share the load, you know. We all help out at home and stuff, which is good. Oh, I know why they pick on me. Why they say the camera on you? Yes. Because you're a lucky girl. I am in the news. You might be on the news, you'll be on a TV show. Oh, I love you. I know. Danny is an instructor at the gym, and Georgia loves spending time there. Georgia, you having fun? Uh, you having a lot of fun? Yeah. yeah. We can just say that she's, she's just enjoying it. She's just so happy being here. I just smile because it. It's worth a million dollars. Down syndrome, or trisomy 21, is caused by an extra copy of all or part of chromosome 21. This causes delays in the way a child develops mentally and physically. There is an estimated 33,000 people with Down syndrome in Australia. That is one and a half times the population of Alice Springs. La 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 la. We are going to be hearing some heartbreaking and honest stories from two exceptional women who have given birth to children with disabilities. We will be talking about the issue of aborting babies being diagnosed with disabilities during pregnancy and also about the issue of euthanasia. Well, when I was pregnant with Sarah, I never realised anything was wrong. So when I, had, um, when I gave birth to Sarah, I had a, I had a difficult birth but um, when she was born, she never cried like the usual baby cries when the baby's born. She whimpered. And for four hours, I never saw her. They were doing tests on her. So eventually the doctor walked into my room and he had tears in his eyes. And he said to my husband and I that Sarah was born with severe brain damage. And I just said to him, what, was, what is that? Is she going to live? And he said, no, she won't. She won't make it. She will die within three days. She was very, very sick. In fact, I said goodbye to Sarah four times 
um, in 10 days. The doctor actually said to me, she's dying right now, you have to say goodbye. And I literally held in my arms and I actually said to Sarah, please, please die, Sarah. Please go to heaven, go and be with God because I don't want to see you suffer like this anymore. But she got well, she got better. And she was, she was given back to us, and I'm thrilled. I mean, I cannot believe that today Sarah is 17 years old. 17? 17. 17. You're 17 years old, Sarah? 17, Susie. Well, my story started when I was 24, and I'd been married for almost a year, and um, I was having a first baby. And um, when I was 19 and a half weeks pregnant, we went for an ultrasound just to check out the baby. At the end of the ultrasound, um, the ultrasound specialist said to me, look, I, I'm really sorry, but I have to tell you, there's quite a few things wrong with your baby. And he said to me, well, most people would, in your situation, would have an abortion. I said, oh, I don't want to have an abortion. And the doctor's quite taken aback. I gave birth to Elizabeth and she, her face, was a little bit abnormal like her mouth was very tiny and her ears were a bit malformed to us she was a beautiful baby when she came out the obstetrician let me hold her just for a moment and then um, the pediatrician took her over to the little human crib and he was trying to see what he could do about her breathing and things like that and so he worked on her for a short time but he said quite soon look there's just nothing we can do because of her airway um, problems she's not going to breathe properly and and Elizabeth uh, only lived for oh, it was a bit less than an hour. Dr Graham Duke is the director of intensive care at the Northern Hospital in Epping Victoria. Is it the patient's right to say look um, Dr Duke uh, I, I want to die so I don't want nothing is he got the right to say that it's it's clear we, the, the first thing is to obviously uh, work out what the patient wants and to respect their viewpoint and it's quite clear that we should not force treatment on any patient who doesn't want it. What I'm trying to convey is that uh, unfortunately there's a lot of misinformation or misunderstanding in the community, not just in the dis disabled group but in the, the wider community about what treatment is or isn't available. Uh, one of the things um, that has been seen in countries where euthanasia is legal, particularly where it's been legal for a long time, um, such as uh, Holland, is that people with disabilities are frightened often to go to hospital because um, they are concerned that rather than being treated, they will become victims of euthanasia. And that has happened. And sometimes disabled people in Holland carry a card saying, please do not euthanasia me. I'm quite happy being disabled. I'm happy with my life and I want proper treatment. Do you think, is there discrimination as a go on um, um, against disabled people? Look, I don't, I don't right. believe so. Uh, in reality, we try not to uh, treat them differently. But um, it's uh, difficult when the, the resources available in the hospital system are limited. Um, uh, it's often difficult to justify putting extraordinary amounts of care and treatment into somebody with a disability when you've got somebody else who's an able-bodied person who has got a much better chance of recovering. If they did pick it up yes. and they said, OK, Louise, this is going to be a problem, right. your, your daughter's going to be born with a severe disability, yes. what choice would you have made? I don't believe in abortion. And I know that there are a lot of circumstances, and I've read some lately in the, in the paper, about people who have really had a lot of sympathy for these mothers. Similar, con similar conditions have been diagnosed for, for children like Sarah. Yeah. And many of them, the doctors don't give you much of an option. They say to you, it'd be better for you to abort. Your child will have this severe brain damage or they'll be born with some sort of abnormality. And we live in a society that wants to have everything perfect. So the thought of having a child that is not perfect it's something that we don't seem to be able to live with in our society. Some people say, oh, isn't it cruel to, have, to give birth to yeah. a baby like that who's going to suffer or yeah. whatever. Now, I mean, Elizabeth only lived for an hour and I don't believe she suffered. She, was, she would have suffered a lot more, I tell you, if she'd had an abortion. We have covered very complex issues and I can't say if abortion or euthanasia is right or wrong.
But I do know I have been touched by both of these ladies' stories and the way they are overcoming their extraordinary adversity. With you forever. The people we've met on this program have shown that having a disability doesn't have to be a barrier to living life. Their strength and courage is an inspiration to all Australians. Find your news wherever you live at bbc.com slash news.